morning, everybody. I am Chris Hardy, one of the pastors here at West Salon United Methodist Church. I wanted to once again say thank you for joining us as we center ourselves upon God as we uh, use these daily devotional videos. And we continue along with our series, Pastor Jeff and I, with the Ask the Pastor. And these are those burning theological questions, those things that we debate, we wonder in our minds and our hearts, we pray to God for answers. Um, important stuff, uh, important issues that we just um, want to apply our, our faith and the knowledge that we gain through, through Scripture and through our hearts. Um, what does God have to say about certain things and how do we interpret it and what does that mean in our lives? And today's question comes from one of those uh, age-old questions that we've been asking ourselves as Christians um, as we evangelize and share the good news of Jesus Christ with others and, and spreading the gospel as Christ calls us to do, um, is that question of, uh, do those that have never heard the good news of God in their lifetime go to hell? So those that have never heard um, Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, does that mean that they go to hell just because they have never heard uh, the gospel and this person provided the example of such as those tribes in the jungles that have no contact with the outside world so we can we can think of the the tribes in the jungles we can also think about you know the hypothetical uh, tribe that lives on a deserted island has never had any contact with outside humanity or outside culture or influence um, just them on this island so what happens to them uh, some people will say about the inclusive love of God, others the exclusive, so to speak, love of God. Those that are welcome and not welcome into the eternal love of God because of uh, addressing that threshold of have they heard the good news. And for me, it goes beyond just hearing the good news. It goes to me, um, do they have the opportunity to hear the good news? And that then lends itself to um, our free will that God has gifted us, the ability to choose or to accept, uh, to live by those decisions that we make and to accept those consequences for said decisions, good or bad. Um, in this case, the opportunity to accept or reject God's grace that was offered to us through Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord and savior. So for me, uh, if you look at uh, John's first letter, God is love. I think that is the lens that we can read through the Bible, through that we see Jesus Christ. So when I think of God as love, I do not believe um, that he would just arbitrarily condemn someone to hell that we think of as this eternal uh, punishment. But I see it also, or maybe a different way, of just separation from God. So would God be eternally separated from someone just because they hadn't had the opportunity um, to me, I say no, because God's grace is substantially larger and much bigger than humanity's ability um, to evangelize and share the good news. So I want to have a couple of scriptures I'd like to turn to this morning, uh, beginning in the Old Testament uh, from the prophet Isaiah, the 45th chapter, um, beginning at verse 20. Assemble yourselves and come together. Draw near, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge, those who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told you this long ago? Who declared it I of old? Was it not I, the Lord? There is no other God beside me, a righteous God and a savior. There is no one beside me. Turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, for my mouth has gone forth in righteousness, a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. So that's Isaiah 45 verses 20 through 23, uh, talking about idols and, and talking about um, the inability for idols, other gods, lowercase g, to save, but no, it's the true God, the one true God that saves. Then we look at what Paul wrote in the second chapter of Romans, and again, I'll read from the NRSV. All who have sinned apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. 
For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous in God's sight, but the doers of the law who will be justified. When Gentiles who do not possess the law do instinctively what the law requires, these, though not having the law, are a law to themselves. They show that what the law requires is written on their hearts, to which their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts will accuse or perhaps excuse them on the day when, according to my gospel, God, through Jesus Christ, will judge the secret thoughts of all. So so to me, that says pretty clear in Paul's writing, um, those that hear the law, um, they know better now, right? It's kind of, you can't claim ignorance uh, once you've known, once you have been offered the opportunity of Jesus Christ. But here he's saying those that don't know any better, those that haven't been exposed to the law, um, those that haven't heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, that there's just this innate sense inside of us that um, lends itself to knowing God and to being um, drawn to God. And this isn't then again to say, well, I'm a good person. This is just that sense of always trying to worship and, and trying to find that um, eternal God, that that part, um, that whole inside of our hearts, I've heard it said, that longs to be with God. And even the people then would go back to the jungle or, or the deserted island, um, what we would call their wooden idols or stone idols or making altars. Um, in a sense, they're searching for God. They're searching for the divine. Um, so their soul, their, their being that um, longs for God. So again, we then, there's plenty of passages that we could turn to and say, well, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What about that? Paul pretty explicitly in other sections says, um, you need to hear the word of God. You need to accept the word of God. And that is the only way to God. Um, but again, I believe that uh, can be interpreted through the ability and the opportunity that one would have or hadn't had, hadn't been exposed to the gospel, um, and whether, whether accepting it or not. Because then later, Paul picks up that exact passage from Isaiah that I read from in his letter to the Philippians in the second chapter. And we've all heard this before, I'm sure, but it's just one of my favorites, so we're going to share it again. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. and Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I don't know how it happens, when it happens, when God provides that opportunity. Uh, but those people that lived on that deserted island never heard the name Jesus Christ, never known the true capital G God, that they shall have that opportunity to accept or reject. And then when we read this scripture that every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, those are the ones that have accepted. This isn't uh, a universalism. I don't believe that God universally saves everyone just because they have have breathed the breath. Um, but this is the, uh, the opportunity uh, to receive Christ into their hearts. So this is one of those questions that we can... Uh, debate and talk about and, and converse and, and write many papers about as they have been um, and, and provide other scriptures that are in favor of or against uh, what I have provided for you here today. So I hope this uh, gives you my interpretation of it, my application of it, as many of these theological um, discussions. There is not one simple, easy, blanket statement um, but I just hope this gives, gives you something to think about. And from my perspective, this is what I believe, that God will not condemn those that have not had the opportunity to accept or reject the good news of Jesus Christ. Friends, thank you for your questions. Thank you for staying tuned in. And I hope to see you on worship on Sunday at all of our four services. May God be with you until we meet again. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I once was a lost, but now I'm found. Was the light, but now. I see
so clearly and hallelujah grace like a rain falls down on me and hallelujah and all my stains are washed away Shining as the sun